I think what I'd like to do is present you with the basic theory of, of what's going on here. So why mm -hmm. do I teach, uh, why do I teach this the way I do? And which has to do with understanding the nature of the mind and the, stru the structure of the mind, I should say. So let's just get started with the theory. Um, so I'll give you the, the, the party hat talk. <laughs> this is a, a cone I made out of mylar to to uh, represent, to make some points. If you think of this as uh, representing the, the structure of the mind, you can get to places in the mind that are relatively gross. Uh, like like right now, I'm sitting in a room, I'm not very concentrated, and I'm um, just, this is my normal waking state. So let's talk about that as being near the base of the pyramid. And as you, as you uh, go to more and more subtle layers of the mind, or strata of the mind, you go higher on, mm -hmm. the, on the, the cone. Also, notice that because it's a three-dimensional cone, we've got these, let's call these alti altitude bands or, or habitat bands mm -hmm. that are discrete. So it's actually very much like going up a mountain where uh, there's a habitat here and there's a different habitat here. It has different flora and fauna depending on where you are. And these can be recognized. This is actually analogous to the jhanas. The jhana looks different when you're sitting in it, then this first jhana looks different from the second jhana, which looks different from the third, and so on. And you can recognize them. So you, you find yourself in one of these, and you, and you look around, and you say, oh, okay, I recognize, the, uh, I recognize this environment. This is the first jhana. Uh -huh. Now, also notice that because it's three-dimensional, you can go to the interior of the cone. So let's say that the exterior of the cone represents a not very concentrated state. So I can get up and down uh, this thing on the surface relatively unconcentrated. However, I can also go into the interior of the cone, and the, and the more I go toward the center, the more concentrated I get. Uh -huh. Notice I'm still at the same habitat band. Whatever habitat band I am in, I'm, I'm in, but I can either be not concentrated or I can be concentrated. So let's take this membrane as the uh, the dividing line between not concentrated and concentrated. So we're going to call this access concentration. The minute you penetrate the membrane and move in, you've achieved access concentration. Mm -hmm. You get more and more concentrated, and the theoretically most concentrated place you could ever be at that habitat band is in the very center of the cone. <clears throat> now... I'm about to explain the difference between pure samatha, which is just absorption, <clears throat> and, and vipassana. At any one of these locations, and it's helpful to think of these as, as physical locations, just conceptually, uh -huh. whether I'm here or whether I'm here or whether I'm here, I can either be absorbed or I can be awake. Now, an example of how uh, an example of being absorbed while being not very concentrated and while being low on the cone would be watching television. Um, I can get involved in the television show and forget that I'm in an environment. Uh, I can't really even tell the difference between me and the show. I'm in it, and that's actually the hallmark of a good show. You know, uh -huh. it's a good show if you can lose yourself. If you don't lose yourself, it was a crummy show. And by the way. You will never, no matter how enlightened you get, you will never lose your ability to become absorbed in a good show. That's part of the fun. Uh -huh. But what you do get, what you gain with enlightenment, is the uh, is the increasing ability to choose not to be absorbed in it, to wake up in it, to be able to be sitting in front of the TV and look around and, and say, wow, I'm sitting in a room looking at lights flash on a screen. Uh -huh. So that is a deeper reality than the absorption reality. You'll hear teachers talk about, uh, jhana teachers, you'll, you'll, tell them, uh, you'll hear them tell you to get absorbed. So in my model, they're telling you to go as, as far as you can into the center of the cone and become absorbed there. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, becoming absorbed is the same as being embedded. And embedded is actually the exact opposite of being enlightened. So to, to do pure samatha practice with the idea of being absorbed for four hours at a time in a, in a particular place, that's just a good way to get four hours closer to death. <laughs> <laughs> you have um, had a pleasant experience for four hours. Nice, but not particularly conducive to awakeness. <clears throat> but notice that you can, when you, once you're in this, uh, this place, and, and you can see that I'm in the center of the cone, um, I have a choice to be either embedded or not. So an image that you can use here, imagine that there's a little sleeping Buddha right here. Uh-huh. And in order to get to him, you have to get very concentrated. That's the only way to access him at, at this particular Buddha. There's also another Buddha right here, and there's a whole bunch of them all over the place, infinite number, I guess. Uh, but So you go to where he is through concentration, and you have a choice now. You can either sit down beside him and also go to sleep, which is to be absorbed for four hours without thinking, or you can shake his ass awake. Uh-huh. And and so how do you awaken him? You sit down behind, beside him and you and you push him on the shoulder and and say, "Look, you're sitting in this environment, which happens to be a very concentrated one." So practically speaking, how do you do that? You have to you have to notice something. You have to objectify something in this environment. And one easy way to do that when you're deeply concentrated, uh, a way that doesn't do a lot of violence to the situation because the last thing you want to do is um, when you're that concentrated, it's delicate. So you don't want to do anything harsh. It's painful. So you don't. What you do is you very gently ask yourself, can I be aware of whether this is pleasant or unpleasant? Uh-huh. And then you say, oh yeah, pleasant. And now you're starting to wake up. I'm sitting in a room watching lights flicker on a box. That's the analogy. Pleasant, pleasant. And you can also notice that contrary to the misperception of a moment ago, there are unpleasant sensations even in this deeply concentrated state. Now that's a real wake-up call. Okay, even this is dukkha. Even this is unsatisfactory. Now I'm awake, I'm deeply concentrated, but it's really interesting. I have a better mix now, a better balance of pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral sensations, and I'm still concentrated. So if you imagine the sleeping Buddhas all over this structure, you have to access every part of the structure um, and objectify something there in order to awaken. <clears throat> 